Today, the whole world is caught in the holocaust of total war. We are in the midst of the greatest production of military equipment ever seen on this earth. America becomes the arsenal of the world. America becomes the pantry of the world. Every piece of equipment and every man on the railroads have a part of this job. Freight for our sons fighting in the frozen north fighting in the shifting desert sands, medicine for a hospital, food for an empty grocer's shelf, furniture for a hero's bride, a great precision machine to produce a secret weapon. We answer the challenge of this war, this giant war of movement. Our answer comes in the roaring, rolling, beating drive of our wheels, rowing the wartime freight when and where it's needed. War isn't somebody else's job, it's everybody's job our job and what we do with wartime freight has a life and death importance no bands are playing no bombers are over this busy freight yard but the war is being fought here as it's being fought on every train and on every farm and in every factory across the country this is what we see every day and right here let's pat ourselves on the back every railroad veteran can be proud of our record we welcome the new men in our ranks and this picture is made to show them how to keep freight moving with loss and damage down to the absolute minimum. But a real railroad man is never satisfied. He knows we can do a better job if we follow methods that have come out of years of experience. It's more important than you think to know the right way to handle freight. Both in the armed services and in the factories, the best brains in the country are doing the best job they ever did in packing freight. But you'll find plenty like this. Watch this veteran call it. Hey, Eddie, here's a baby with double marks. Go on the shipper and find out where it's going. Let's catch bad marking every time. Watch caution marks, too. This side up, it means what it says. If you could see inside this package, you'd get the idea. Shipments of explosives, inflammables, gases, corrosive liquids and poisons must be examined to be sure the container is undamaged and marked and labeled right. Don't take anything for granted. A good container, plainly and correctly marked, is half the battle. The rest is up to us. You can learn a lot by watching the other fellow. This old timer puts his own safety first. Don't break your back on a heavy piece of freight. Get help and lift it the way these men do. Watch the way he uses his legs. There it goes, up and on the truck. In good weather or bad, the freight, mountains of it, keeps coming. It's our job to check it and handle it carefully. You never know how important a piece of freight is, but it's all important to somebody. We have to handle it piece by piece just as carefully as we can. Loading in a fit car, clean, dry, and free of nails, is the first step in a safe journey. Here's a big fella that needs a lot of bracing. Parallel blocking along the skids will stop the machine from creeping sideways. Don't spike the skids to the car floor. Then at or a little above the center of gravity, goes the brace across the car. While this powerful brace is going into place, 1,500 miles away, engineers have worked out production charts around this machine. Other machines, batteries of them, are waiting. Men have been hired and trained. Materials have been ordered. And they'll all be in a bad fix if the machine doesn't get there. 
The wheels of production at one factory can't turn unless this machine gets to the consignee in 100% condition. And this kind of handling will put it through okay. All right, let's look at the other end of the car. Away from the rough stuff goes the carton freight. Hey, be careful, bud. That's glass. That's better. What you got? Ah, that's keeping your eyes open. This box needs recoupering. If we can't fix it on the spot, let's get it over to the cooper shop. You know the old saying, a stitch in time saves nine. Our stitch may be only a piece of tape or a strap, but it's worth the trouble. When you think about it that way, you can't be too careful. That's what keeps the damage down. Out on the platform, the traveling cooper has found a critical shipment of tools. The box is busted open. It is carefully repacked. And with a few nails and straps, it's ready to go. There's lots to know about barrels. They're always stowed with a bung stave, naturally the weakest stave, in the clear where it won't get bumped. When you load cartons on these chimes, be sure to protect them like this. An old piece of carton does the trick and gives an even surface with plenty of protection. When dunnage boards are available, they give stronger support for the heavier loads. Soft freight rides well on top of case goods like this, which offer an even surface. Here's another everyday problem. Bailed merchandise has to be stowed on a clean, dry floor on its side and not on the salvage end. Now, if anything spills on the floor, not every yard in the bale will be damaged. Rugs and linoleum in rolls are loaded flat lengthwise and not allowed to stick out into the doorway where they might get scuffed and stowed so they won't rub. The men who unload the car have to read those marks. So if the caution marks don't say otherwise, stow them so they can be read without handling the package. Wrapped chairs are loaded on their sides, crossways, and protected against contact with other freight. Those legs are fragile, and they could puncture a carton if we don't look out. Damage to carload shipments runs into a good deal of money, too. Greater care will prevent a lot of this. Oh, 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 right here is a fine example of what happens when the slack isn't taken out of the load. Unless we report all such cases to the shipper, he won't know what's happening and how to prevent it. Half the trick is to stow them tight. Here's a good example of a well-stowed car. No slack here. Every box in perfect condition. Here's a 50-ton load of tin plate. And you can see that it's had careful handling in every train and in every yard all down the line. This kind of skillful handling makes friends for you as a railroad man and makes friends for rail transportation. Heavy drums ride safely when they're tied together in a floating load. If rough freight gets loose in a car, it can chew up a lot of cartons. The most important rule in loading LCL safely is to put the rough freight in one end, cartons in the other. Over here is a shipment that might give us a little trouble. If we don't put in some protection, it will damage those valves and discs. 
dunnage boards separate the lot of pipe and protect it. Now she'll ride. That's all it takes, that little extra care, that extra precaution. Installing this bulkhead to reduce the shifting and crushing force of the load is good practice. With the bulkhead strongly strapped or blocked in place, the foreman can have a comfortable feeling about the load. There's no substitute for good judgment and the rules of protection. As we see so much valuable freight going through the house, it's worth remembering that stealing is no longer the problem it was. We're all mighty proud of the fact that theft losses in the last few years have been reduced 96%. But why can't we all be as careful as we are honest? Now that we have a properly loaded car, let's see how well it can be handled in transit. It's a million little things, like hand signals that cannot be misunderstood in switching. It's the way the air is used. It's skillful switching with safe coupling speeds, bringing cars together no faster than this fellow is walking. Always remember the rule that the crushing force, for example, at eight miles an hour is not double, but is four times as great as the crushing force at four miles an hour. You can't tell what's in a car just by looking at it. If you're a little more careful, maybe the man next to you will follow along and will build up the kind of morale and teamwork that means perfect shipping. You're looking at 6,000 tons of freight beginning to roll. The tremendous commerce of our country depends upon rail transportation. Five men are going to take it away. But it took thousands of men and women to produce all that tonnage. It took time and materials and sweat and brains. It has to be trucked and stowed a piece at a time. When it's delivered, it'll be one more fine example of teamwork, American style. What does it mean? What's beyond those rolling wheels? Somewhere, factories are waiting for key tools or material or machines. When it comes through, the smoke will pour out and the battle hymn of production will go into high gear. Somebody's daughter or somebody's son needs those surgical dressings or drugs. A hospital must have what is needed to perform delicate operations and save lives. No matter what it is, the skilled men of American railroads can be depended upon to do a top-notch job of transportation. Nobody else, no other transportation agency can do it. It's our job, and we're going to see it through. You get the point. Total War has forced us to mobilize the know-how, the goodwill, and the teamwork of the whole railroad organization. It's all of us for victory. It's teamwork with a smile. First, there's a war to win, and we railroad men are showing the world what we can do to help win a war. And after that, there's the peace. What we do now, how we do our job, how we treat our customers, how we handle their freight. What we do now will help win the peace to come, help us to a better future for ourselves, our families, and our children.